Hi, I'm Woody from Line to Line Coding. Hi, I'm Andy Suman. We're gonna show you in this video how to break in different types of pistons. We got two strokes, street cars, circle track, drag oh, race, oh mod. diesel. They're all a little different and they're all kind of the same. We're gonna go through them. Factors that affect break-in can include different piston alloys, uh, whether your application's air-cooled, water-cooled, or if you have hard block material in your block. Yeah, and also the amount of time the engine runs, like a drag race engine might have to turn on and go very quickly. Circle track, you have time to break it in. Of course, street cars, you can break in right. differently. Also, the architecture of the piston itself, you got long skirts that are kind of thin, these are not as stiff, where if you have a short skirt that's real thick, that's going to be real stout. You got to break them in a little differently. We have basic trade-offs to consider when you're using APC. You know, when, you, when you're ordering, you need to have a break-in plan for your pistons. Yeah, you need to balance your objectives for the engine, whether you're restoring something or trying to squeeze out the last bit of power that you could get. Your experience level with our coatings and with that specific engine is going to come into play and uh, the available time to break it in. So you're going to kind of blend and balance all those to get the best result. When if you're in doubt, you leave more room and uh, plan more time to creep up on the, on the perfection as far as the fit goes. Yeah, and by more room we mean don't take up so much of the clearance. Leave a little more of the factory recommended clearance uh, there and that way it's not going to be as tight more forgiving on the break-in, but you may be leaving a little bit of performance on the table that you could have had. So in a, as an example, in high volume manufacturing, they need to drop them in and be quick and effective, turn it on and drive away. If you're trying to set a record, that's a different story. You're gonna fuss around to get the perfect result. Right. Just remember, when you first assemble your engine, the pistons don't properly fit the bore, and by that we mean they need to wear in. They need to get to the proper size. That's what we're going to show you how to yeah. do in this video for all these different applications. So this graphic shows uh, actual dimensions of the bores and the pistons. These are the bores, these are the pistons, two cylinders out of a four-cylinder engine. And you can see the red cylinder, we started with a very tight piston to wall clearance, very quickly the piston lost dimension. We kept taking it apart, measuring, putting it back together, run it some more. And then it levels out over time. You can see how the blue one, we started with a bigger clearance and out into the miles, this is about 45,000 miles, uh, the clearance is virtually the same. So you don't have to start at an exact clearance to end up at the right clearance and that's what the coating is doing for you. So when we first spray a piston, the coating thickness is pretty uniform so it's going to still have the same shape as an uncoated piston. It's going to be proud in this gauge point and that's the spot where you're going to initially start to hit the bore. Right. So that's going to be higher loaded in the beginning but it's also going to be the high wear rate. Mm -hmm. So as you keep running, this high loaded area wears away and now you're left with this larger footprint and you're basically, when the, when the coating is done breaking into the shape of the bore, you've got all your high stress areas are worn away and, and your uniform oil film forms. Very little wear out here on the edges, but lots of wear occurred in the middle to, to achieve that shape. You'll find this break-in sheet in the box with your pistons when you receive them. So zooming in on the bottom of that sheet, this graph is a, a philosophy of what we're trying to do. Notice there's no exact time chart. There's no exact power level because there's so many different kinds of engines, but they all follow the same philosophy. And remember, when you're looking at this, uh, take note of this red part. So we, we want to make sure you have a successful break-in, get the best fit safely for your engine. 
So now when you do receive your parts, remember we took a bunch of clearance up that should have been there. So your pistons really don't fit the bore the way you want them to after the break-in. We have to get them there to that shape through this process. Right, most of the wear is gonna happen quickly when the conditions require it. So be careful in the beginning. Uh, that's, that's the way to play this. Read the red part and take your time. Yeah, so what we're showing here is, you know, you start your engine, you're probably gonna do leak checks, do a couple hot cold cycles, whatever you normally do to the engine to make sure it's right. And then this is where we break away and do something a little different from your normal. So keep in mind here, you could be breaking in your camshaft, you're, you're breaking in your rings to an extent. Sure. There's a lot of break-ins that always happen in an engine, but we need you to focus and think about your pistons here. So when you put power, meaning uh, load and RPM, Getting it's gotta load. have load, your pistons are gonna get hot. They're gonna grow faster than your bore. And parts of the piston, like the gauge point, that's gonna hit your bore first and we're gonna start wearing material off. So we wanna put a little bit of power. Notice this is at idle. You might rev it a couple times when you're doing your little checks, but now we're gonna start climbing the power ramp. You're gonna go up and hold it for maybe five seconds or 10 seconds and then just drop it down to idle. Your pistons are gonna grow in that five seconds, start to hit the bore, and then you're gonna let off, let it idle. You get the oil back up in there, the piston shrinks again, everything's all happy, and then you're gonna go up again to a little higher level and hold it, and then you're gonna drop down again. And we just wanna take off a little bit of coating at each level. Don't try and do it all at once, because it has to go somewhere. If, if it's getting tight and you just keep pouring the coals to it, it's got nowhere to go, so it's not gonna work as well. So as you do this, and again, on a, on a dirt bike, it's different than a uh, drag race car, which is different from a street car. And we'll get into more detail on those, but they all follow this. You wanna push it until your bores are getting snug on the pistons and leave it there for a little bit of time and then let it off. Shut it off and let it get dead cold if possible. If you have the time, let it go completely cold. Yeah, that's good too. So eventually you're gonna be able to run. Uh, we've worn material off at each of these plateaus and eventually your piston is gonna grow and it's not gonna hit the bore hard because we've worn enough off in all the spots that started to touch. Right. And then you can, out here, you can hold it wide open all day and everything's nice and snug. You got that fit, your piston is not rocking and you're gonna have a great engine. On two stroke engines, the small stock two strokes, we use the Slick CC almost exclusively. Uh, there's, they're, they're always tight to the bore. They're very close tolerance units and uh, they don't have a lot of room for coating. So, you know, a little bit of Scotch-Brite you know, fit this into the bore and, you know, when it slides through light with finger pressure, you're, you're probably there. You're probably ready to fire this thing up. Yeah, and then um, we use the Slick CC, not the Slick Plus usually, because it's real thin. It's not a high power application, so we need a softer coating. If you put that coating on a top fuel, it'll be gone in a half a second. If you put top fuel coating on this, your bike will never break in. Right. So it's that balance. Um, so once your engine is built and you've done a couple heat cycles, just like we said, then you're gonna start riding it. Well, you might go through a couple gears, part throttle, and then maybe third gear, you start feeling, wow, it's starting to bog a little bit. Well, that's because your piston's getting too tight. You'll feel that on a dirt bike and you can just pull the clutch in and wring some gas through it to cool, cool it off. and get oil and fuel in there again. You're not hurting anything. Yeah, that it's not hurting anything, but it, it, you'll feel it bogging. Right. And then, you know, start over. And then you'll probably feel it bogging a little bit later in third year. And eventually you'll be able to just pin it and go through all the gears. But every time it starts to bog, you want to go, oh, I feel it. I'm going to let off. Give it some time. Give yeah. it some fuel. 
um, without load. Right. So then on race engines, it's a whole different story. Those guys like to use, um, in race two strokes, they like to use the harder coatings and they like to spend more time um, so that in a long race or a long season, that's the most durable coating. And a lot of times those guys know exactly where they want extra thickness. So we might put on a uniform and they, they do their own hand fitting because they see where it gets tight because they're going into the same engine sure. over and over. And uh, one time I was with Mike Wienant, it was really neat. We had this two stroke uh, snowmobile on the dyno and we could look right in the exhaust port. So we put brand new coated pistons in there, run it, it's not making the power. We look in, well, it was making power, but not as much as we wanted. So you look in the port and there's this little spot that was dry and uh, the rest of the skirt was wet. <laughs> So then we run it a few more times and that little dry spot just got smaller and smaller. And that was, so we were actually watching the piston shape itself to the bore and you could see it in the sheen of the oil on the skirt. Really neat. Good stuff. Okay, four stroke gas and, and, uh, and diesel engines. And you know, if you have a stock uh, performance vehicle or stock diesel engine, you can really, you get your engine assembled, you can just start driving it, you know, take it a little easy at first get through the gears, part throttle, uh, treat it as if your fuel injection unit is starting to learn. Everybody's familiar with that by now. Add a little power as you go and continue cycling through the gears. If you see things uh, uh, bogging or anything, stop, let it, let it cool down. If your application is a performance engine, you don't have access to a dynamometer, you, you can involve braking oils, that helps a little bit. Uh, you know. A smoother plateau hone, which will wear the coating slower. You can keep it simple by spending more time on the progressive power ramp, if you please. You know, even if you have a street performance vehicle, uh, with my engines, I'll, I've got a hill. I'll drive up the hill, which is kind of a nice way to do it. Yeah, half throttle up the hill, Hard and throttle, then sure. next steady, time you're three state, quarter yeah. throttle, maybe. Works and, good. Yep. So remember, your break in procedure actually starts when you're ordering your pistons. You've got to make the plan of how tight you're gonna go and what coating, and we can help you with that, of course. But uh, when you get your engine together, you have to remember what your plan was and follow it. That so, plan's gonna start by running the calculation on this order form. Yes. That's the right place to start. Down here. Yep. So on the order form, there's a spot here that we're gonna leave 25% of our recommended clearance if you're not familiar with this application or if you don't have time to do a careful break-in, you can change this 0.25 of 25% and say, let's take up 50% of the clearance. Now there's gonna be less work to do the break-in, but you're not gonna get as tight of a final fit all across the skirt. So it's really a trade-off. And that's why we want you to think ahead when you're ordering and think back to your order and your build when you start running the engine. Okay, it's important to have a break-in strategy before you place your order. You know, look at the calculation sheet, follow the instructions, go back and look at our videos. Look at them a couple of times if you need to. And uh, at any time, if you really think you need some more advice, give us a call. Okay, the Pro Stock, Pro Mod, Top Fuel category of engines, you know, these are you might find yourself with no time for break-in and uh, they'll sneak up on these clearances. Start with a 30 or 40 percent of clearance and uh, you know sometimes you might get up to 50 but it just depends. If you don't like what you feel when you after you get it, scotch Bright's going to get you back down a little bit and uh, once you've established a recipe you might want to consider harder coating later on like Tribal Live. So in a production engine environment these coatings are used in some high volume applications like remanufactured uh, warrantied engines for on the road, um, drones, military and civilian, some other uh, OEM applications. So um, those applications are always specified. The thicknesses are specified ahead of time. So these pistons will just drop into their bore just like the standard assembly process. Then when they fire it up, 
all that's predetermined, so you really don't need to worry about it, but that's how we handle the high volumes. And we can do thousands, tens of thousands of pistons with this process, so we're hoping to get into even more. And our coatings qualified on an aviation application as well. Yes, recently. Okay, if you have a vintage or any restoration uh, uh, component part, oil pump, piston, or what have you, you know, we, we'll see your, uh, you know, we'll see your power level to condition the part and, and hatch a plan. And, uh, you know, you can follow the piston calculation on your own, but many times our customers call us and say, hey, what about this? They've got a unique piston, some unique profile. You know, we'll look at it and help you make a decision on that. So please call us if you need assistance. Yeah, there's nothing more fun than bringing the old stuff back to life. Okay, this piston on the screen right here is a, is a great example of what we're trying to achieve. This is 1,500 hard laps of racing on a dirt modified. And you can see we've got a real nice piston profile. We're burnished in the center here. We're a little bit fuzzy on the edges where it's filling in. You know, here's our integrated clearance area. This is what we're trying to achieve. Here's another great example of a dirt modified piston. Skirt looks beautiful. He's got the chocolate appearance uh, on the combustion dome. And then underneath, you can tell how hot this thing and hard this thing was running. It looks like it was burning really right. And look at how beautiful that whole skirt's engaging the board. Yep. So some of the common mistakes of breaking in the pistons is going to too high of a power level too quickly. Um, the other side of that same exact problem is going too thick with too hard of a coating. Remember, it's a balance. If you go thick with a hard coating and there's not much clearance, you gotta take more time to break it in and achieve that fit carefully. If you go too fast with too much power too early, you can pinch the piston, and this piston is an example of that. You can see this is overheating of the, of the coating. Um, there's so much friction, the oil gets pushed out of there, you keep going, it's a polymer, so it's gonna weaken and you start to get these little spider lightning crack things. Now, sometimes people have run an engine for a couple years, called us up and said, man, my engine ran so good, I can't even believe it. I just took it apart, but I saw this. I wanted you to see it. So this doesn't mean your engine isn't gonna run right, but we would prefer to see a nice even skirt over the whole thing. Right. So be careful. Um, it, it starts with your plan and your experience level and your power level and uh, those progressive power steps. Go higher, higher power, down to idle. Let it sit there a minute. Then go up another a little bit higher and back down. That's the key. You're always going to get the right result if you do enough of that. Take your time. Thank you very much. Please check us out at linetolinecoatings.com. Lots of information. FAQs, videos help you and call us if you need to. So.